Good morning, YouTube. Check this out. The Proco Rat. This thing is a classic. Introduced in 1978, it's been used by more famous guitarists than, than you could shake a stick at. Seriously, the, the list of guitarists that have used this is like a who's who of great guitar players, okay? This particular unit is on loan to me from a friend. I think it's from the late 90s, early 2000s maybe. You can see that it was still made in the USA. So this is before they moved production to China. This is my clone of that. Okay, so this is a DIY kit. The designer of this board actually added some extra bells and whistles to it. So you get all the original parts, plus a fourth potentiometer and a switch on the back. So you get two different types of uh, options as far as distortion goes. So let's go back and see how I built this thing. And then we'll meet back here, then we'll see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. All right, excited. Let's get building. I still remember the first time I heard a rat pedal. It was years ago and I was working at Propellerhead, and Propellerhead being a music software company, of course they've got a nice studio in the back. So one day after work, a bunch of us were in the studio, just jamming and having a good time. And one of the guys had brought in his DMX drum machine. Vintage drum machine, sounds fantastic. I could make a whole video just about that drum machine. So we fired it up and within 10 seconds, there's a great beat happening. Everybody's smiling, heads are bobbing. That machine definitely has the head bob factor. Anyway, the same guy brought in the rat pedal, so we plugged in the drum machine through the pedal and he said, hey, watch this. As soon as he clicked that thing on, it was instant industrial music, it was awesome. We went from straight drum machine sound to this hard and wonderful industrial sound. What's funny is I've been trying to get that sound with plugins and software instruments and it was, it was proving to be a little bit difficult, but with this one pedal, all of a sudden it was right there, it was instant. It was amazing, I loved it. It was at that point I realized guitar pedals aren't just for guitars, and running drum machines and synths through them isn't a gimmick. You can actually get cool sounds that are hard to get otherwise. Anyway, that's my story with the rap pedal. This is not to say the rap pedal is the only pedal you should use for synths and drum machines. I'm sure there's plenty of others, and in fact I'm probably going to build a few more. Now this rat clone was designed by Phil Mulder at Dead End FX, so shout out to Phil for designing this thing. And I bought this PCB from Philip Wise at Pusherman Productions, who manufactured and distributed the boards as part of a big group buy. I'll leave links in the show notes so you guys can go check that out. It's a pretty easy build, it's only 39 parts. Honestly, the hardest part is just ordering the components that you're gonna need to build the PCB. When you order this, you just get the PCB. You don't get the parts, so it's on you to go find the parts that you need. Fortunately, most of those parts are easy to get and they're just peanut butter parts, like plain resistors, capacitors, not anything complicated. The only part that might be a little bit difficult to get is that you need an LM308N op amp. Okay, these things are no longer in production, but there is plenty of new old stock available and floating around. So if you do some research, you can find it on eBay, as I did. My only tip here is that you buy from a reputable yeah. dealer. I've heard reports on the internet that people have ordered parts and ended up getting fake parts or lousy components or used things that don't work well or don't sound quite right. So do yourself a favor and make sure you're ordering from a reputable dealer with good ratings and the rest of the build should be pretty easy. All right, so here we are. Let me give you a really quick rundown of the setup here so you can understand what's going on. So here I've got my trusted Digitact. All the drum sounds that you're about to hear are coming out of the left output and going straight into the computer where they're being recorded. No additional processing happening. The bass line that is coming out of this thing is coming out of the right channel. It's the only thing coming out of the right channel and it's going through the rat pedal. And then the output of that is again, going into the computer where it's being recorded. Once again, no additional processing, nothing happening once it hits the computer. The rat pedal itself, this has four knobs um, and they are as follows. So this knob is going to be the distortion knob. This is the one I'm going to grab most often and it corresponds to this knob on the original pedal. This is the volume knob, so that corresponds to this guy. The reason you need a volume control at the end is because when you turn the distortion up, this can quickly get very loud. 
Right, so as you turn this up, you will commonly need to turn this down so that your output level is still manageable. Okay. This is the filter. As you turn this up, it brings the high frequencies down. Okay, so as you see me turning this clockwise like so, it's gonna bring the high frequencies down. This is a very useful feature to have when you're distorting things, because when you distort, it tends to bring out a lot of high frequency sort of fuzz and crackle and sparkle and all kinds of good stuff. But sometimes you wanna bring some of that under control. And that's what this does. This is called the Reutz mod, I think, or Roots mod. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, but it lets you tighten up the distortion, right? If it's all the way down, like so, low frequencies, high frequencies, everything is causing those diodes to distort. And so it becomes very sort of uncontrolled and wild. Whereas if you turn this closer to the top where I like it, it tends to sort of control that distortion because it's only letting the higher frequencies cause the distortion to happen in the diodes. Speaking of diodes, you'll notice there's a switch here that the original rat pedal does not have. And you'll notice that the switch is right next to the two diodes in the back. And these are two different diodes and they have different sort of distortion characteristics. So this actually gives you like two different flavors of distortion. So with all this being explained, let me play the beat. I'll let it play a few times so you can get an idea of what it is. And then we can uh, start messing around and see what we get. All right, basic beat, kind of a boring bass line, nothing special. Let's see if we can uh, bring some life into this. Even the smallest amount of distortion here really adds some life and flavor to the thing. Now you'll notice it's getting louder, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this down. You know what, let's turn this up a little bit more. You can really hear those, um, the, the contours of the sound are changing. So the bass is getting thicker. It's almost as if there's other parts, other notes coming out of this. It's imparting more sort of flavor to it. getting quite thick. Now maybe we want to roll some of the high frequency crackle off and we can do that with this knob. Nice and thick. Very creamy. And this is the control sort of, it tightens up the, it's on full tightness now but if you loosen this up some of the high frequencies back so you can hear it. Very wild distortion. This is probably too much for most cases. But I love what this is doing. This has such a like an industrial kind of hard vibe to it. Let's see if we can get that a little bit tighter. Now the thing is, this pedal is very dependent on the signal that's coming in. So if you start messing with the, the filter, for example, on the bass sound coming out of here, you can really start getting different tones and flavors out of it. So again, if you turn all the way down to get the dry, dry signal, this is what it is. Not very exciting. If you turn this up. Bring the high frequencies under control a little bit. We haven't even dived into the second diode yet, which is my favorite. So 
second one gets really loud, so I'm gonna turn this down, switch to mode two. Love the character of this, it's so thick and uh, bass heavy. So the peaks of the signal are really causing this thing to, to clamp down and distort. Tighten it up a little more. And I love what this is doing to my signal. Turn it up to get some of the high frequencies attenuated and under control. This might not be everybody's favorite thing. This might not be necessary for every track. But if you need some kind of distorted, grungy, kind of industrial hard sound, it's hard to get that. And it's so easy if you have one of these. off. Back to the original sound. And there you have it. Now you might be wondering why is this a bare board? Why is this not in some sort of box or some sort of case? And to be honest, that was my plan. I was gonna get a box, something like this, something similar to this, and install it in there and call it a day. But I realized that maybe doesn't make sense for me. You know, this form factor makes a lot of sense if you're a guitar player and this is on the ground and you're gonna stomp on it with your foot. Okay, that's great if you're a guitar player, but I'm a synth guy. I like to play with my modules and turn the knobs all the time, and I like my modular synth a lot. So I want this in front of me, somewhere where I can easily patch into it and adjust things. So that's what I'm gonna do. I figured out how I'm gonna do that. It would make this video way too long to, to build all of this into a module. So you're gonna have to uh, tune in to the next episode, where I'm gonna take this thing and install it into a Eurorack front panel and do all the things that I have to do to get this thing with its 9 volt power to work inside a Eurorack 12 volt system. So I hope you'll tune in for that. Just wanted to say thank you so much for everybody that has tuned in. Uh, the first episode, I was amazed at the reception that it got. I was thrilled. This is a passion project of mine. I don't really get paid to do any of this. And it's really nice to see people come out of the woodwork and watch the video and say nice things and share it. And that really makes me uh, uh, feel like I'm onto, I'm onto a good thing here. 
So I hope you will join me in the next one where I finish building this thing and turn it into a nice module that, uh, that I can use. So thanks again. And I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>